What a fine morning, everybody. Today we're gonna discuss the differences between push, pull, and long pull coming up. What's up, y'all? This is your host, Hussein Nasser from iGeometry, where we discuss software engineering by example. It's fine Friday, guys. Beautiful weather here, Southern California. Well, today's discussion is not really a GIS topic, but kind of related, software engineering. So today we're going to discuss the difference between a pull request, a push request, and a long pull, right? So. Let's, let's just talk about wh what are these exactly, what is the semantics, when, why, what kind of engineering is behind those. So, in a traditional synchronous HTTP request, you as a client, it could be a browser, or it could be an app, a desktop app, really anything that uses the HTTP protocol, Sorry guys, for some reason, the recording stopped, so <laughs> I realized that like in, in minute three or something, so I'm gonna repeat all the way. Okay guys, so hopefully I don't disconnect that, hopefully this is still working, that's good, okay. I think I accidentally hit stop. Alright guys, so yeah, in a traditional HTTP request, uh, what you do, what you usually do is the client packets this request, especially when, when, uh, when you're trying to check for messages, correct, or, or check for new notifications. The client will build up this request and send it to the server through the HTTP. Right? Typically the server is understands how to deal with HTTP request, right? It takes the request, processes it, it goes through a lot of stuff and packs headers and a lot of things that we can go into details make sure that this request is not cached if it is cached using e-tag it doesn't really have to to actually process that request and it goes through a lot of stuff and then it returns the result it says hey you cool you're good so and it returns the response back to the client so that's that's the uh, that's the ideal classic synchronous HTTP request, right? Where a client requests something, server takes that request, processes it, returns the result. However, there are cases where, especially in, a, in a, when you're checking for new messages or trying to process a new message or trying to check, check for a job status that is hidden somewhere at the back end, you will re make that request, right? And the server will process that. And it can either tell you, hey, you, you have a new messages or you don't have a new message. And I'm interested in this in the later part, la latter part. So if, you, if the client makes a request, hey, do I have a new messages? Do I have a new notification? The server will take that, take that request process that request, right? And tells you, you don't have a new message. The client says, okay, how often should I check? Should I check again? Uh, probably, I'm gonna check every one minute, whatever, right? So you check again. Do I have a new messages? Do I have a new notification? Do I have a new email? Do I have whatever, right? The, the client does that again. Cool. And then, the server says, I don't have any messages for you, right? And this goes on and on, and that's what I'm interested in. This notion of request for something that is changing, and it's like this uncertainty of do I have a new message or not, is a waste, is a, is a, waste a lot of bandwidth resources, because you, what do you do every time, you're not sure, so you have to make this request. You have to take that hit by 
building the request, assembling the request, sending it across the wire, consume valuable network resources only to get to the server. Service does all that work, right? It cannot really cache this thing because you never know. You cannot cache this kind of request at the server because hey, I can't, I don't know. There, there are either new messages or not, okay? The moment you consume those messages, poof, they're gone, right? You have to receive a new, you have to basically request, uh, th those messages are read now, essentially. So you get the new messages and then you keep, you keep asking this, the, the server for more. And this approach is called pulling, right? You can, con cons you're, you're consistently asking the server for information. And this approach is called pulling. You're pulling server from, from the server. Okay, you're constantly asking the server for information. Okay, so this is this is okay. A lot of application does that. However, it's as you can see, especially if uh, if you if you're in, in an intermittent network connection, that imagine hundreds of thousand clients doing all these requests only this is like essentially empty requests right they're just opening tcp connections consuming consuming valuable resources for nothing right almost so one solution to this was all right we're gonna do it the other way let's do push However, the push approach is the opposite. It says, hey, hey client, establish a connection with me and I'll tell you, as the server, I'll tell you when there is something, okay? So the server now kinda, whenever it receives a message, event will get triggered and it will loop through all the client that is currently connected to it and we'll let them know, hey, there is a new message. This way, it's, it's better. Okay? It's still, it, it has its own disadvantages as well. Because you can't guarantee that the client is online. You can't guarantee that the client is ready to process your message. What if your, your client never actually received that message? Do you discard it? Do you, what do you do? You cannot, you have to know you have to have this knowledge that the client has actually processed your message. So it's, it's like the, the, this has flipped on the server's shoulder, this responsibility. So, so this pull versus push. Final thing is the long pull. That's actually another cool kind of hybrid approach of, uh, of implementation where it says, okay, client, make a request, right? And Kafka uses this, by the way, as a message queue. Make a request, and I'm gonna keep you waiting. I'm not gonna give you the answer immediately. I'm not gonna tell you that you don't have results. I'm gonna keep you waiting for X amount of time, all right? After which I'll respond, okay? Or if I received as a server, if I found that in this X amount of time could be Three seconds could be an hour, whatever, right? If I receive the, a new message in this time, I'm gonna push it to you, okay? Or if I receive this much bytes, I'm gonna push it back to you, all right? So the client keeps waiting, and but that's cool because the client can be asynchronous, right? It can send that request, it does its own thing. Whenever it gets a request, the result, that server will push us, essentially, the results back to the client only when it receives that, that, so that minimizes the network traffic. Okay, oh, uh, so, all right, guys, I think that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you know that different now the difference between pull, push, and long pull approaches. This is this is definitely very useful. Uh, I guess engineering techniques in the request response. Uh, realm all right guys you guys stay awesome have a nice weekend see you next week